From the day Ethel was born, singing for her was like falling off a log. It was just so natural. Her father would play the piano, and she had a ball. Ethel loved men. She really loved them. As a matter of fact, uh, she used to refer to a part of uh, the male anatomy as a man's most desirable part, and she meant it. Ethel once told me that she was not happy when she was in love. She didn't like to be in love because she was always afraid she was going to get hurt. Ethel didn't have a nerve in her body when she stepped in front of an audience. The nerves were manifested differently. Everything had to be perfect. If she wasn't feeling things were going to go well, she could be hell on wheels. And that's, I think, where her nerves came out. The greatest disappointment of Ethel's life, I think, was the fact that she had lost Bob Levitt. She regretted it as long as she lived. Ethel's daughter once said to me, Mom scares me sometimes. And I could understand that. I could see it. Whatever really happened, she never wanted to discuss. Um, she said it came down to dollars and cents or reality or whatever, but none of us will ever really know. She knew her way around a four-letter word. But Ethel Merman was a very religious woman. Her favorite songs were Christmas carols and hymns and especially the Lord's Prayer. She thought, well, I could be doing something useful, so she volunteered her services in the gift shop. Uh, she said once that a, a lady stopped her in the elevator and said, um, did anyone ever tell you you look like Ethel Merman? She said, oh, I'll bet Ethel Merman wishes she looked like you. So Ethel loved that. On April 7th, 1983, Ethel packed her bags and was moments away from leaving her New York apartment when she suddenly collapsed. The star had suffered a massive stroke. She was rushed into surgery, where doctors diagnosed a brain tumor. In an instant, she had lost the ability to walk or speak. In her final unhappy months of illness, Ethel allowed few friends to see her, but she was lovingly looked after by her son Robert and her close friend Tony Quantro. When she got ill, we had a little needlepoint pillow made that said, She's me pal. The first song that she had ever sung as a little girl, and she really couldn't speak at this point. And we went to the hospital, and Ethel looked at the pillow, and she started to cry. And she put the pillow up to her cheek, and she sang the whole song perfectly. That was probably the last performance Ethel Merman ever gave. After Ethel died, Alex Cohen, the great producer, was interviewed on television. He told the interviewer, you can be replaced and I can be replaced, but Ethel Merman can never be replaced.